we are recording. Let us record. And we are recording, so don't say anything that could convict you of any crime. Okay. <laughs> don't say anything. Because if that could happen, uh, it would happen in this, and this would be evidence. And then we'd have to be forced to uh, give jurors the gospel. Yeah. Which wouldn't be too bad. No. So say something bad. No. No. <laughs> say something bad. No. Um, don't say anything bad. Well, Bob brought the Bible, but we don't need the Bibles anymore. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Bible Hub. Have any, I've been using Bible Hub. Have any of y'all been like looking at it, getting familiar with it? It's actually a really good resource. I, um, I have it on my iPad plus on my phone. It, it, is, it is a very good resource. It's a quick resource. Yes, yeah, it is. Um, I don't think it reads. It doesn't read, does it? I don't think it does. I don't think it reads for you. Um, but it's, uh, it's real handy. Yes, it is. So I like, and, and, and I just went over, briefly went over uh, chapter 22 on the Thursday group. We will get done before Thursday. Man, man. Thursday group was so proud that they've got an hour and a half. And they were like, well, we're going to be ahead. How are you going to deal with the Sunday group? Because you'll be so behind. But then, because of certain situations with COVID and everything, the Sunday group got ahead. And the Thursday group's behind. Um, but that's okay. In the Thursday group, we just barely uh, scratched chapter 22. But there's one thing I like about the end of Joshua. The end of Joshua, you actually get sort of a breather. You get a kind of thing. Um, and, and even at the beginning of chapter 22, Joshua told the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. He said, go back. And why did he say go back? He said, go back to your place. Now these are the mighty men of valor who he took at the beginning, he said, go back to your place and rest. And rest. Just rest. Now, he, he doesn't say rest and that's it. No, he said rest. Remember the commandments of the Lord and the commandments that Moses wrote down. But go back to your place. Now is a time of what? Of rest. This whole chapter, this whole chapter, this whole book, the beginning of the book, everything is haste, right? We got to go into the promised land. We got to do this. We got to do this now. And then, and then there's battle after battle after battle. And after the battles, you even have the allotments that are made in sort of haste, right? After, um, after Caleb, Judah, and um, uh, uh, Benjamin and Simeon, or no, 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 after Caleb and Judah, uh, you have. Uh, uh, Joshua saying to the other people, uh, I think it was Benjamin too, after Caleb, Judah, and Benjamin, you have Joshua reminding the people, what are you still doing? Go out, see what's, um, uh, 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 take five people, I think he said, from the tribe, and go scour the land, find out what it is, and then we'll cast lots. We still got work to do. Y'all need a place of your own. This tribe needs a place. And so, now, in chapter 22, we finally get a breather. We talked about that last week. We finally get a breather. <sighs> I equated this on uh, Thursday. Have y'all ever seen the movie Lincoln? Oh, yeah. With Daniel Day-Lewis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, um, I actually like the movie. Um, and, I, and, and Daniel Day-Lewis... Uh, um, he, he had a cool speech, kind of a weird speech, but cool speech where he, he sort of said the irony is that an actor killed uh, Lincoln, now actors portray Lincoln or bring him back to life in some sense uh, through their acting. But um, anyway, th there's a, a part in the movie Lincoln where Lincoln is sitting on the porch, and I think he's sitting with Grant, and Grant says, do you want us to... Uh, do you want us to get the, the rest in Haiti? 
And he says, no, I don't think so. He says, send it back. There's been enough bloodshed. Uh, that's that's sort of the rest. Like, like we're done. We're done. Let's go home. Let's go home. Uh, it's that uh, it's a similar rest. Uh, well, it's not as good as, but uh, it, it's it's that breather. Uh, it's that breather from Good Friday to Easter Sunday, where he rests in the tomb from all the work that he did, right? God rested from all the work that he did. You get that sense of rest here. Um, now, there was a problem, a little conflict in chapter 22. What, what was that problem? Misunderstanding. Misunderstanding, that's right. That huge misunderstanding, right? It was uh, almost a disaster. Almost a disaster. You know, it's funny. Um, well, yeah, it was almost a disaster, right? So what happens in chapter 22 um, is, is as they're returning, they build an altar. They build an altar. Uh, where did they build that altar? Let me see. I think it was, was it by the Jordan or near the Jordan? Near the Jordan, they build this altar. And, and uh, the, this, the eastern tribes build an altar. And the Western tribes are like, whoa, what, what, nah, -uh, not going to happen, nope. So they come to make war with the, the Eastern tribe. This is sort of a foreshadow, by the way, right? You know that uh, literary uh, device, a foreshadow of, 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 of the split that, that's going to happen the other way, not, not, not based on the Jordan with the other one. But anyways, they make war. But they're ready to make war. Um, they're afraid that the eastern tribes built an altar and were about to commit idolatry, right? Because I think we established that the altar of the Lord is in where? Shiloh, right? Mm -hmm. The altar is by the Jordan. Yeah. The so what is the altar for? Was it for idolatry? No, it was for remembrance. Lest, get this, lest the children or the generations past would think to themselves, well, those beyond the Jordan aren't really Israelites, right? Or the children or the children on the eastern side say those uh, beyond uh, the eastern part aren't really Israelites. So the, the altar is meant to Unify in remembrance that we are all Israelites, right? Mm -hmm. Those on the east side and the west side. That's right, James. Those on the east side and the west side. Um, uh, and so they go. At this point, they go. Now we're on chapter 23. A long time afterward, when the Lord had given rest to Israel. Again, there's the idea of rest, right? The whole sort of book is sort of, I don't want to say chaotic, right? But what word would you describe the whole, the, all of the chapters of the book, even before the allotment? Haste, anxiety, Sort of uh, stress-driven. Um, but here we go again. When the Lord had given rest to Israel from all that surrounding, uh, from all their surrounding enemies, and Joshua was old and well advanced in years. I don't know which is better. Would you rather be called old or well advanced in years? I'm not. Don't look at both. I was looking at anybody. Uh, I I would rather be called wise. Right? I, I, usually, instead of getting in trouble, I say the wiser one. Well advanced in years. This is language that wouldn't allow God 
like like God would probably uh, offend some members of his congregation. Don't call me well advanced in years. Hmm. What are you calling old? No. <laughs> um, no. Um, so anyways, uh, when Joshua was old and well advanced in years, hmm. Joshua summoned all Israel, its elders and heads, its judges and officers, and said to them, I am now old and well advanced in years. And you have seen all that the Lord God has done to all these nations for your sake. For it is the Lord your God who has fought for you. Behold, I have allotted to you as an inheritance for your tribes those nations that remain along uh, along with all the nations that I have already cut off from the Jordan to the great sea in the west. Um, the Mediterranean Sea is huge, right? That's almost, when you look at it, it almost looks like the ocean, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Crazy. Because you could say the same with the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, uh, Galveston, and Corpus Christi, it smells a lot there because of the seaweed and all that. All that. But, it, but it still looks big and it's still part of the ocean, but um, it, the gulf itself is not as big as the Mediterranean Sea. So, anyways, uh, where am I in? Um, the Great Sea in the West. Uh, this is five. The Lord God will push them back before you and drive them out of your sight, and you shall possess their land, just as the Lord your God promised you. Everything that the Lord has promised has come to pass, has it not? <clears throat> now it did take 40 years, but he had to clean house in 40 years, didn't he? Mm -hmm. There was rebellions, there was people who were unfaithful. This is a generation which God has uh, used to uh, fulfill his promise. And you shall possess their land just as the Lord God has promised you. Six. Therefore be strong to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses. <clears throat> be strong, right? When we hear that, we should consider that the actual phrase that was spoken to uh, Joshua, that was spoken to the people, be strong and courageous, for I am with you. Be strong to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, turning aside from it neither to the right hand or to the left, that you may not mix with these nations remaining among you, or make mention of the names of their gods. The point of God's word and the point of the book of the law, when we, by the way, when we speak of the book of the law, we're talking about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's the book of the law. And we're also talking about the Ten Commandments, right? The point of the book of the law, or the Ten Commandments, let me move this so you can see that too, the point of that is to keep us separate from the other nations. That you do not mix with these nations remaining among you, or make mention of the names of their gods, or swear by them, or serve them, or bow down to them. But you shall Cling to the Lord your God just as you have done to this day. If you cling to the Lord your God, you will see how he will fight for you. <clears throat> it's been shown to you throughout this book. Cling to his promises. Cling to his word. When we hear the book of the law, we're also hearing that this is God's word. God's word is meant to separate us from other nations. 
and to keep us steadfast in not mixing with other nations. That in some sense, one of Israel's greatest sin is not just following Baal, but incorporating Baal with the worship that was meant for the Lord. Does that make sense? It's not just that they followed the gods of Baal, but they incorporated it in the worship that was meant specifically for who? For God. And that's why God can say, I am a jealous God. So he reminds them, he reminds them in this first chapter, in their rest, he, in their rest, he reminds them of what God has already done for them and reminds them to stay in the book of the law. Do not forget it. Do not forget it. Any questions? For the Lord has for the Lord has driven out before you great and strong nations. And as for you, no man has been able to stand before you to this day. One man of you puts to fight uh, puts to flight a thousand, since it is the Lord your God who fights for you. Again, Joshua is just a book that shows us how the Lord fights for the faithful. It's a book of this. It shows how God keeps his promises and how he fights for the faithful. Be very careful, therefore, to love the Lord your God. How do you love the Lord your God as an Israelite? How do you show love to the Lord your God as an Israelite? It's objective. And he told us just a few verses beforehand. How do you show love to the Lord your God? Faithful in the words of the book of the law. You do this. And you don't mix with other nations. This is how you show love to the Lord your God. And you trust that he what? That he fights for you. That's how you show love to the Lord your God. And by the way, simultaneously, if you follow the book of the law, and if you love the Lord your God, who else are you going to love? Your neighbor. Your neighbor. Right? Exactly. It works together. Therefore, show love to the Lord your God. And you can go back and say, remember the book of the law and all that God has done for you this day. For if you turn back and cling to the remnant of these nations remaining among you and make marriages with them so that you... See, here is God. See... Every we we in our minds and in, in, in we I pastors have to do this every day, but we have to get this out of our mind. When we hear about the Old Testament, what do we think about God? Take a man of vengeful, wrathful, judge. He's very judgy. When we think of the New Testament, what do we think about God? Loving, faithful, graceful, merciful. But God does not have that dichotomy. He is both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. In the New Testament, he's also vengeful, wrathful, and seeks justice. And he's also graceful, merciful, and loving. In the Old Testament, he's merciful. Loving, graceful. And this is why. This is why. He spent his word, his breath was spent 
throughout these years wandering in the wilderness, of telling them constantly. First he gave them the book of the law. And then he kept telling them, what? When you go to the promised land, devote everything to destruction. Devote everything to destruction. Because I know, I know that if you leave one little crumb, if you leave one little crumb, you're going to walk away from everything that I just did for you. I know that if you marry one little person from another nation, you will cause the whole nation to worship Baal. I know that if you do this, and so I'm telling you this day, don't do it. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. And why is he saying, please don't do it? Why is he telling them that? Because he doesn't want to do what he has to do as God. And who is God? In philosophy, everybody knows that God is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-justice, uh, or all-good. All the omni. And if God is all-good, and he sees his own people doing something they shouldn't, he has to punish them. So that's why he spends his whole Old Testament crying through prophets, through Joshua, through Moses, through prophets, through judges, through Ruth, through David, through Solomon sometimes. He, through all these means, he keeps trying to tell his people, please stop. Please stop. Come back to me. And he always says, when he says, come back to me, I'll receive you. There will be justice for what has been done. But I will restore everything thousandfold. Read the Psalms. Read the prophets. Just don't read Jeremiah, especially in our day and age. My wife and I are reading Jeremiah, and we're like, oh, ah, 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 okay. I'm just about to stir over this. Yeah, yeah, me, yeah, yeah, Lord be with you. Uh, no, uh, Jeremiah, it, uh, our, your first inclination, and I'm going to digress for a little bit. Your first inclination when you read Jeremiah is la, 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 la. And, and, and it should be. It should be. Because let me tell you this. At this point in Israel's history, God has had enough. God has had enough. Imagine being King Josiah, and I think the priest was named, uh, uh, Nehemiah, and they found the book of the law, and Josiah was, was, was a good king. He got the whole nation to repent. And you know what the Lord said to him? Too late. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Too late. But he did say this to uh, Josiah. Now, Josiah died by the sword. But he did tell Josiah, you know, you know what? It's too late. But I'm going to make sure you're not here to see what's going to happen. This is God's grace and mercy here. He's telling them through Joshua, heed my words. Remember my words. Please do this. This is what I gave to you so that when you're in this nation, and if they did what the Lord God told them to do, they would be, as is said, a light on the hill, right? To other nations. A light on the hill to other nations. Because God is not just the God of Israel, as through Christ. In his ministry, we understand that God is not only the God for Israel, but also for the ethne, the Gentile, the Goyim. You, we are all just a bunch of Goys. The Goyim. What? No, tell me. No, it's just a family joke. Okay. <laughs> but God is a God 
of the all nations in Israel was uplifted to be the one to share the gospel. Um, I think we're on 12. For if you turn back and claim to the remnant of these nations remaining among you and make marriages with them so that you associate with them and with you, you uh, know for certain that the Lord God will no longer drive out these nations before you, but they shall be a snare and a trap for you. A whip on your sides and thorns in your eyes. A whip on your sides and thorns in your eyes. A whip on your, I mean, we're in Lent. Do these words mean something? A whip on your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good ground. That the Lord your God has given you. Christ certainly bears a lot. Doesn't he? For even when Christ comes. That's, for like, even, huh? that's like a crucifixion. Oh yeah. Somehow. Yeah this is, this is language. Uh, Christ came to bear even the sins of Israel. It's like he's cursing himself. Yeah. Well mm -hmm. he. It's like he knows what's going to happen, right? Re um, do y'all know what it, how how you make a covenant? Have I talked about this? When you make a covenant with another nation, you get animal one animal, two animals, couple of animals. I don't know how many. You cut it in half and you separate it out, and then both kings walk across it, right? And what, what that saying is, if I break this covenant, what, it, what we did to this animal, so would happen to me, right? Now, God made a covenant with Abraham. And instead of Abraham and God walking through the blood, it was just God. It was just God who walked through the blood. How come it wasn't Abraham? Because God's the only one who could fulfill that covenant. And now, Joshua says, And now, I am about to go the way of all the earth. And you know in your hearts and souls, all of you, that not one word has failed of all the good things that the Lord God had promised, uh, that the Lord your God promised concerning you. So this is, um, I, uh, my guess is this is Joshua's last sort of um, sermon to the people, so to speak. You see that? Mm -hmm. uh, but just as all the good things that the Lord your God promised concerning you have been fulfilled for you, so the Lord God will bring upon you all the evil things until he has destroyed you from off this good land. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Well, that was a flip. Let's look at this again. And now I'm about to go to the way of all the earth. Now we just now he just said that if you don't follow my words, the other nations are going to be his tool to get rid of you. A trap, a snare, a thorn in your side. Now he said, I'm about to go all the way uh, of the earth, and you know in your hearts, all of you, that not one word has failed of all the good things that the Lord God has promised concerning you. All have come to pass for you. Not one of them has failed, right? God's words never fail. But just as all the good things that the Lord your God has promised concerning you have been fulfilled for you, so the Lord will bring up 
upon you all the evil things until he has destroyed you from off this good land that the Lord your God has given you. If you transgress the covenant of the Lord your God. Gosh, it almost seems like his word is important, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any questions, comments, concerns? Frustrations, struggles? If you transgress the covenant that the Lord your God, which he has commanded you, and go serve other gods and bow down to uh, bow down to them, then the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you, and you shall perish quickly from off the good land that he has given you. Right? It's almost that this is right, you would call this a warning, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Would you call this a warning? Yeah, yes. Yes. It hasn't happened yet, and he's clearly giving them an opportunity to avoid it's, the, the bad stuff. It's, um, it's that same in Deuteronomy, I forgot what it is. You have before you life and death. Choose life. Mm -hmm. Choose life. Choose life. And that's, he brings. Joshua, the Lord through Joshua brings Israel the same thing. Look, on the one hand, you have all that God has given you. Look at this land. Look at where you dwell in. And at this point, right, at the beginning of chapter 23, it says, long time afterward, when the Lord had given rest to Israel. First off, there is no rest unless the Lord gives it, right? Mm -hmm. That's the beginning of this chapter. There is no rest until the Lord gives it, right? Secondly, what does that tell us? Contextually speaking, they have lived in this land and rested in this land for a long time afterwards, right? They know the taste of the fruit. They know the joys of the rest, and they know what it means to have peace, right? So, Joshua tells them, hey, on the one hand, look at all that God has done for you. Look at all that God has done for you. Do not think for yourself, do not think for yourself, <laughs> in some sense, don't think for yourself, this is it. It could be lost. And on the other hand, if you don't follow the way that the Lord has set things up, if you don't remember the book of the law, if you don't remember the love that he showed by fulfilling his promises. And if you mix with other nations, because that temptation is going to be there, then this stuff on this hand is going away. This land would almost be turned into a curse. Does that make sense? You would, you would almost wish you weren't a part of this land after disobeying and going to this side. His word is meant to humble us. His word is meant to humble us so that he can be our God and we can be his what? People. And believe in him and what he has commanded. So what's what's on your mind? <clears throat> what do you think? Well, clearly there's a works. Clearly there's a promise. 
that you can keep the land if you maintain the covenant. That's, I would call that gospel. Yeah. It's an invitation. We got to be. He'll, he'll keep you here and care for you and protect you. This is. Keep going. But however, there's a there's a law there as well that yeah will we'll destroy you if you if you choose to. Uh, it's almost with anything we do, right? It's almost with anything we do. We can lose it. this. This is not just. Um, do you remember the parable of um, I forgot even what it's called, but it's in Luke. This guy, he has, he, he had this plentiful, uh, he had this plentiful land, and he wanted to buy a bunch of barns so that he can store everything in the barns. And then when he was satisfied and stored it up in the barns, um, that night the Lord said, "You fool!" Right? This night I take. He thought he was comfortable with all the stuff he had saved up. Then he realized. It's not worth anything because the Lord took, you know, the Lord took me. In some sense, that's this here. Don't think for yourself that that this is a uh, this is um, because I did this for you. You know, it's it's fine and dandy. You still got to follow my law. You still got to do what God has told you to do. This is a part of this sort of sanctification in some sense. I hate to say that word, but it is sort of, they still have to work within this um, to keep themselves from being a part of the other nation. Now, it's not, it's not work that gets God to change his mind as far as, oh, you know, no, he's already done the work, right? It's not a work that incites God to continue to. No, he's already done the work. This work is to maintain that which God has given. Like the story of Abraham. When he, when he uh, took on the devoted possessions. Yeah. He became one. Yeah. Same with uh, and, Israelites and, here. Yeah. When they <clears throat> take on the devoted they become it. They become a curse. They become a curse, and they get the benefit. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, and 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 we can learn a lot from that today. Uh, God has done for us a mighty work in His Son, right? And the works we do today uh, are works uh, in remembrance towards that. Um, and they help strengthen us as we dwell in them, right? We go to church. We read the word. We hear the promise. We receive the sacrament. We remember our baptism. And by doing this, we separate ourselves from the world. And we hold fast to the promise that God continues to give. We separate ourselves from the devil, right? And, and it, it, it's almost fitting to hear this in the season of Lent, right? The season of Lent is a penitential season where we, we should repent of the sins, of the sins which we commit daily, but more so of the sins on which we know that Christ bore from the Jordan all the way to Mount Calvary. But even more so... Huh? No, no, no. You. I was just say it's it's like we're serving the Lord instead of the devil. Right. So our works keep up. How do I want to word this? By dwelling in the Word, we strengthen our faith. And we strengthen, we are strengthened by remembering the promises that God gives to us as we 
uh, continue to sojourn. They're still sojourning. I mean, they're dwelling in the promised land, but there's still this idea of sojourning, right? They're, 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 their time in the wilderness, remembering the Lord's promises, isn't different. Their actions in the wilderness shouldn't be different than their actions in the promised land. Does that make sense? Now, they're in the promised land. They dwell in the promised land. But just like in the wilderness, in the promised land, Remember the words of the book of the law. So also, while the Lord has given us everything in reconciliation through Christ, we still soldier. So we dwell in the word of the God in order that we might be strengthened until God comes to us on that last day to finally bring us with, with the faith. Um, you can easily manipulate this in some sense to a works righteousness thing but the works here aren't works righteousness the works here are, are works that flow from the promises that God had already fulfilled does that make sense? what I think of when you heard the phrase uh, idle hands for the devil's flavor Yes. That's the best. I think about that a lot. Yeah. You know, when I'm when I should be doing something and maybe I'm not doing something and there's kind of that vacuum that's created. If you're not moving in a positive, you know, doing the things you're supposed to do, you can very often fall into the trap of doing the things you shouldn't do. Yeah, yeah. And so kind of that middle position, that kind of neutral, I guess, is dangerous. Yeah. And so they're supposed to just keep moving well, and it's, following and you know, going for the direction of being faithful to it. Yeah. So, it, it, and that's, that's almost like they're resting. What are they supposed to do with, in this time of rest, right? Are they supposed to be lumps on a log? Okay. How do you rest properly? How do you love God? But how do you rest properly? You remember what God has done for you, right? Does that make sense? I think so. Jesus' words, uh, rather than a, a parasitical high heavy kind of thing, it's just like pick up your cross and follow it. Hey, that's funny you mentioned that because that's the gospel for today. Oh, it is. Yeah, is there <laughs> That's that's actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, 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 in some sense, God is saying the same thing. Do it. Follow me. Follow me. Um, um, um. I, I've already done it, right? Your works don't have to be, hey, we got to make sure, you, you, we got to make, um, uh, we got to make, uh, uh, I, I don't know, but 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 the, everything's already done. Just remember, right? Reading the words, doing the law is a part of the remembrance. And that's how you're my people. Right? My people do this. My people do this. This is a constant theme in the Old Testament. Israel gets off base. God brings them back and says, how about this? I'll be your God, you be my people. They go, okay, that sounds good. Then they go off base again, and he brings them back again. And he says, you know what? Let's make a new deal. How about this? I'll be your God. You be my people. They say, okay. That works. Then they go this way again. And he goes, no, 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 no. Here, come here. Come back. How about this? I got a new thing. How about I be your God and you be my people? How about that? They're like, yeah. I mean, we never thought about that. Good. Finally, I believe the last act of God saying, okay, how about I'll be your God and you be my people is in Christ, right? I'll be your God, you be my people, and according to Joshua, my people love me by remembering my commandments, by doing the book of the covenant of the law of Moses, and by dwelling in the land that I gave them. 
I'll be your God, you be my people, and if my people today believe in my son, Jesus Christ, these are my people. These are the ones that I have reconciled. Dwell in him, right? He's the promise. He's the land that God promised us. That's Jesus. Jesus is the promised land. He makes that land for us. Twenty-three. I got two minutes. Let's. Uh, <laughs> don't waste any. Of it. Don't waste any. Don't waste any. Isn't it like he's like they're trying to choose? either to go with him or to go with the devil. I think uh, it's not that they're trained to choose. I think there I think there is our minds see that right look when he says today you have before you life and death. Now you can choose life or death, but is that really a choice there, right? Is there really a choice there? Who would choose death, right? I, I, what do you call that? An offer you cannot refuse. Well, yeah, yeah, that's right. Godfather. <laughs> but, but, but I think there's this, we might look at this idea and say, well, we still have to choose. No, the choice is already made for them. The choice was already made for them. Right? Do you see that? The choice has already been made for them. He's saying, just don't, don't do this. I've given you this choice. Look at it. You've been resting in it for a long time afterwards. And I've been well advanced in you. And I'm, I'm, I'm still growing hair in places I don't know. Or maybe it's coming off. Right? Have you ever heard of the... Uh, it's going downhill. <laughs> uh, what about Elisha? Who was bald? And he had the... the, the, the uh, the boys were making fun of him. So he sent a bear that mauled all the boys making fun of his bald head. Don't mess with somebody who's bald. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's choice, right? There, there's the, uh, it's almost the illusion of choice, but the choice has already been made for them. They've been dwelling in that choice. Do you like it? This is how you dwell in my land. This is how you be my people. Um, next week, we'll go over the last part. This is where we get that famous, um, uh, the famous line from Joshua where he says, As for me and my house, what? We will serve the Lord. So he gets them another illusion of choice, right? Before he gives them that choice, he gave them chapter 23. He says, look at how long you've been dwelling here. Look at how great it's been. Look at how the Lord has continued to fight for you. You can serve the Lord, or you can go with the devil. Um, and so we'll look more about that covenant renewal next week. Any questions, comments, concerns? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Remember, we're recording. So if you have any crime that you want to admit to, don't say it. But if you do say it, it'll still be good because we can proclaim the gospel to a bunch of jurors. Hmm. Do you think, do you think this, this, well, anyway, I won't go more into that. That's, that's kicking it that way. Um, anyways, uh, let us end with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, guys. Very much.
Thank you.